I'm sorry, cabbage, of course, not a salad. There's hardly ever a time that a cabbage is not in need in a Trinity garden. And there's hardly ever a time that a cabbage is cheap in the market. So let's learn how to grow them 100% organic right at home in containers. Super simple, easy, and affordable. Hello everyone, thank you all so much for joining in. This is Dylan from the Trinity Gardener channel and I'm super excited for this video. Even though it's a very windy one and this sunflower has fallen probably about 10 times already, I'm excited because you're going to be talking about growing one of the most versatile crops that you can have in a Trinity Garden, which is cabbages. Let's get to it. Now in my cauliflower growing guide, I talked to you all about a plant that people exaggerated how difficult it was to grow and that it really wasn't that difficult at all. Cabbage is kind of the opposite, not entirely the opposite. It's not super impossible. It's not super difficult to grow. It's just that it's one of those crops that as a beginning gardener, at least in my experience, I thought, you know, okay, I'm going to grow some cabbages because I like to eat cabbage. We use it all the time at home. And it's going to have like 20 heads of cabbages, right? Um, it was not the case at all because as a beginning gardener, I wasn't quite prepared for the amount of work that goes into making sure that you get a nice, big, healthy head of cabbages. To be honest, I didn't even know how cabbages grow properly. I used to think, like many people, that the cabbage leaves the fold in on one another and that's how you get a cabbage but it's entirely false how the cabbage grows is just like how a cauliflower or a broccoli will grow which is that you have your leaves that sort of fan out to the sides and then the head it forms in the middle so it's not something that closes in it's something that forms in the middle just like any other head of any other brassica that you can have in your garden now the first thing of course when you are growing um, cabbages and i am growing my cabbages in containers that's just based on my situation here which is that we have a huge slug problem and the slugs, they don't affect too many of my other plants. They don't affect tomatoes. They affect peppers a bit more, like sweet pepper. But for some reason, they love cabbages. They absolutely adore cabbages. So that's why I grow my cabbages almost entirely in containers. I have had some success with them just in ground or in a raised bed. But I think that it's just not worthy really stress for me, based on my situation, to have cabbages anywhere else than in a container, which is good because these container growing guides are some of the most popular videos because it's making gardening just so much more accessible for so many people who don't have that ability or the resources to grow in ground or even in a raised bed. Now, the first thing that you'll need is a container, more and more, as I have mentioned before in my cauliflower growing guide, and also if you have already seen my broccoli growing guide, I use these containers for almost all my brassicas because it's just the perfect size, in my opinion, which is just around three, three and a half gallons and they are very, very durable. They're very cheap, $25 for a container, and sometimes you get it on specials, so it can be $20 even cheaper for a container that's pretty much a lifetime guarantee because they just, they're designed for a lot harder work, right? So that work is nothing compared to what these containers can take. At the bottom of your container, you're going to want to make sure and you're going to put some drainage holes. Do not be hesitant to put many drainage holes, minimum five half inch holes. You can put even more sometimes you could even break out almost half of the, the bottom of the, the um, container don't worry once that dirt compacts once you get that water in no dirt is going to fall out from your container and also i don't expect you to be moving your container very very much okay so it is really not something that you have to worry about the more important thing um, is to make sure that your container has enough drainage sufficient drainage because cabbages just like almost anything else they will get root rot if they are to sit in water that hasn't um, the ability to drain out so make sure that you have drainage holes in your container so we have our cabbage seedling ready to go these are normally a dollar to fifty cents in a greenhouse no more than two dollars you should be paying for one of these seedlings and inside of my container here i have a growing mix of mainly two types of compost i have wood compost and i have my animal manure which is called manure well cured six months on this right minimum four to five hour four to five months for your cow manure to make sure it's nice and cured right um inside of the and if you've seen my cauliflower or broccoli guys this is going to be very very similar inside of the growing hole i have put some of this goodie here which is worm castings right it's another type of manure right from worms right very very good for the fertilizer um for nitrogen specifically right and I've also put, you can see the kind of colorful stuff there, looks like gravel, but it's not. That's this organic fertilizer, which is very, very optional. And I've said that before. This is just something that I use mainly, not actually for the nutrients, but for what it can do for helping the plant to uptake nutrients, okay? These, this fertilizer specifically, not just these, but this one, right? Um, from Epsoma, okay, that brand there. It has these 
beneficial bacteria okay these beneficial bacteria what they do is that they go and they find the roots of your plant and they will colonize the root of your plant so they use themselves to create like a network so just imagine this is the root of your plant this is say like this was the root of your plant then there would be colonies of the bacteria coming out and just creating like a web whereby moisture nutrients would be able to um, just come to the plant through the beneficial bacteria and then the plant can uptake them okay so it basically multiplies your plant's ability to take nutrients up which is very very important in an organic garden where we don't flood our plants with too many um, extra strong chemicals but rather we're using the plant's innate natural ability to uptake nutrients and just magnifying that through a natural means now normally again if you don't have this it's completely fine because the animal manure the cow manure and the um the wood compost and even if you use like green waste compost all of that is going to have beneficial bacteria and fungi so it is well available here this is just something extra that i'm doing but if you don't have the same to spend on it it's completely fine okay so that's gonna do you like to put a nice deep enough hole for my cabbage to make sure and support the stem of the cabbage right up doing this in one hand right so just be patient with me good there we go right cool and there we go we just make sure that the stem is nice and supported on you there and that's it your cabbage is well planted in inside of the container and just very very important thing i don't think i have any more inside of the watering can here but this soil is already pre-moistened if you did not pre-moisten your soil make sure and give your cabbage a nice drink of water making sure to water your plants is going to avoid something called transplant shock transplant shock is just basically where you transplant a seedling and you don't give it everything that it needs because it's a baby you don't baby it properly and the seedling can just not do well at all it can be dwarfed it can have the leaves fall off and droop and become scorched all of that so just very important to baby up your seedlings because it is really just a baby and just like you would with a baby you want to be very gentle with it don't give it full sunlight just yet give it about a few days uh, partial shade and that kind of thing before you put it out into the sun but there you go all planted in now when it comes to sunlight you should give your cabbages a minimum of six hours of sunlight i would even push it towards seven to eight hours of sunlight now the thing about cabbages which is very similar to broccoli and cauliflower just not as similar is that they can bolt right cabbages I find them to be a lot more hardy to our Trinidadian climate than cauliflower, than broccoli. So you can grow them, even though they aren't technically a summer crop. And of course, Trinidad needs you know, purely summer crops. They can support the heat for the most part, the uh, varieties that we have here in Trinidad that you can get in a greenhouse. And that's what I advise you to do. Grow your um, cabbages from um, transplants that you get in a greenhouse because they are just going to have the varieties that do the best in Trinidad, which is a lot of hybrid varieties. A lot of the heirloom cabbage uh, varieties that you can get as seeds, they don't grow as well because they are designed for a lot less um, hot climate, right? Because cabbages in like um, a lot of temperate countries, they are mostly grown around the spring and the fall, right? Um, so they don't really take that summer heat so much. So those heirlooms, they're going to do better in a cooler climate, right? Um, it's not cold for people who live in temperate countries, but for us, 20 degrees, 21 degrees Celsius is super, super cold based on Trinidadian standards. Now, when you are giving your cabbage sun, what I do is I give them some afternoon shade. So they get full sun from the crack of dawn, from, so probably from like half past six in the morning till around 2 to 2.30 p.m. And that's pretty much it for the amount of sunlight they get. So they get around eight to eight and a half hours of sunlight and then they get shade for the rest of the day. The reason is that they can bolt, and I've talked about bolting before, and I'm going to continue talking about bolting. Bolting is a process whereby uh, plants like cabbage go to seed, all right? The, the seed process isn't as evident in cabbage uh, as much as it is like in a tomato. You know, you check into the fruit and you get seed, or, you know, you think if you go into a cabbage, you can find the seed. That's not how you get seed from cabbages. What you get is the cabbage is going to bolt which is the name of the process it's going to extend a stem going up and then you're going to get flowers and in those flowers you're going to get the seeds from them you do not want that to happen unless your intention is to save seeds which i'm going to assume most of you don't want to do you want to eat a nice cabbage you want to make um, some coleslaw so you want to make sure that your cabbage does not bolt how do we avoid the cabbage bolting we avoid that by making sure the cabbage is always comfortable that means not giving it 
too much sunlight. It needs sunlight to grow. Absolutely. It needs a photosynthesize. That's what these big massive leaves are for. But if you give it too much of sun, which in the Trinidadian context means excessive, excessive heat, these cabbages can bolt. All right. So give it just some the right amount of sunlight, that eight hours amount of sunlight and then give it some shade after that. It can probably take more. It's just that I don't feel comfortable giving my cabbages any more than that because I think that's sufficient and I think that's going to keep them nice and you know give them the energy but keep them comfortable at the same time. Now, keeping them comfortable is going to take us into the next topic which goes hand in hand with the sunlight, which is moisture. You want to make sure that your cabbage is always in access or having access to water as much as it needs and it never should feel stressed or go completely bone dry okay if at any point you put your finger down two inches in the container and you can't feel any coolness any moisture at all that means you're putting your cabbage through stress because the cabbage wants to feel nice and cool and also have that uptake of nutrients which happens through water that's how the all plants get their uh, nutrients right through water moisture is what does that so i would like these cabbages here, these days, right? If rain was falling, it would be a different um, story. But right now, I'm taping this in the beginning of April, right? The first week of April. And it is bone dry, right? I think we got like a drizzle yesterday. It did absolutely nothing. So these cabbages, every single day, I water them, right? I water them in the morning and then I check them in the afternoon to make sure that they aren't completely dried out. Because you would be surprised the kind of heat that we have in Trinidad. It's not like other countries. We do have a very, very terrible sun. And that means that our plants, like our brassicas, we need to make sure and keep on checking them for moisture. It's not just a matter of, okay, you need to water them one, step, one time a day or you need to water them like two times a day. You need to check them, okay? Water them in the morning time. That's the best time, in my opinion, to water any brassica, right? You water them well in the morning. And then in the afternoon, you just raise up the leaves, stick your hand underneath and just sort of feel around and if it feels like, okay, it's, it's okay, it can last until the morning, then don't bother to water it again, right? And if you are watering in the afternoon, I would advise you to lift up those leaves and water underneath. Water the soil itself. It's not a good practice to have the leaves with too much of moisture being soaked and drenched in the afternoon because that moisture on the top on the leaf softens the leaf and makes the leaf more attractive to things like slugs and even caterpillars that will come in especially slugs i've had a lot of issues with slugs and they will come in simply because there's that moisture so the environment is very comfortable for them now this is an extra tip right which is something that i have talked about on tiktok if you follow me on tiktok i i have done a few videos on this topic which is to go through look at the bottom of your cabbages go right around and all of the leaves that are starting to turn yellow that are getting leaf minor that are going dry those leaves pull them out and prune them off of your plant okay take the same leaves put them in the compost pile so you're not wasting the foliage they do they do contain nutrients that you can use in your compost in your green waste compost but definitely don't leave those leaves around because one those leaves have lost the ability to photosynthesize but the second thing which is for me even more important is that those leaves when they lose that chlorophyll and they become sort of soggy and soft slugs are that kind of leaf it's like a big buffet for them and they will come in for that leaf and it would be nice if they came in and then left they will come in and then they'll sort of lay their eggs they'll sit around sometimes they'll even bore their way into the head of your cabbage and they'll start eating the cabbage from the inside same thing with caterpillars so it's better to just leave the healthy leaves on your um, cabbage and just get rid of the rest because the rest are just going to be causing problems here plant now when it comes to fertilization I talked to you when I was doing the planting that I use a very potent mix when I do cabbages because cabbage needs a lot, a lot of energy to produce that head. That's something that I didn't quite understand the very first time that I tried to grow cabbage, right? It doesn't just happen like that. You need to make sure that your plant is always having as much nutrients as you can give it within reason. One of the things that I do, which is what I talked to you about when I was planting it in, is I use the animal manual, the cow manual that's well composted, that's well cured. And I will even apply that every three to four weeks after planting so that as the plant is growing up and it is depleting nutrients because this is sucking a lot of energy. That's one of the reasons why you have to water so much because it's always sucking up nutrients through that water and that's making the um, soil get dry, but it's also depleting nutrients. 
and it's not as drastic as that it's not like you have to reapply every single day or every single week but at least three 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 weeks at least three weeks to four weeks i will go back take some pot and mix or take just a mixture of some garden soil mixed in with some cow manure or even pure cow manure and just incorporate that in the very top layer just lift up the leaves and just rest some of that on top and then water it in and that will just help replenish the soil that's in the container because the, the roots only have so much of soil to work with when you have a container garden so you want to make sure that the, the roots can go to more nutrients as would happen in the soil or on the earth or even like in a raised bed but you can bring that nutrient into the container and don't take it for granted that you have a certain amount of soil and that's just going to be enough it could be but it's better to have too much nutrient within reason don't burn your plants with anything that's not cured like chicken manure that people want to use within a month or two months don't do that make sure that the manure is nice and well cured but definitely you want to make sure the plant has that nutrient at hand all the time because it's not just nitrogen that the plant needs it needs so many other um, nutrients that we sometimes don't even know the names of um, it's just better to just make sure that it has everything and a well good a well-rounded compost such as your green waste compost and even your animal manure or mixture of the two is going to help your cabbage to get there and make sure that you always have as much nutrients as your plant needs to get that nice big head because it's not easy to form that head and that's it for your cabbage so it's not a difficult crop to grow at all but there are things for us to consider and i hope that you understood that from this video and i hope that you learned something from this video i hope it's going to encourage you to go out and grow your nice cabbages and enjoy your nice meals and feel free to share pictures of your meals and even your garden with us on instagram tiktok and on facebook remember that if you know someone who'd be interested in growing more organic healthy food for themselves and their family to become more self-sustainable then share this video with them but also share the channel with them and let's help them along on the journey as we all learn together remember as always this has been dylan from the training gardener channel reminding you to get up and get growing take care